Good day everyone, this is John again and welcome back to our video series. Today we're going to talk about creating a domain controller in Azure, connecting it to our site to site. Let's get started. We're going to take a look at our virtual machine. First thing we need to do for a domain controller in Azure is go ahead and create an extra drive just for our Active Directory files and settings. So we go into the disk section here. I'm going to go ahead and attach a new drive to this virtual machine. We get the default name. We're going to go ahead and change that. Again, that's something you have to change, but I like to have my own names. Drive type and size. You only really need about 10 gig for most situations but again Azure is only going to charge you for what you consume so you can go with whatever size you want here. I'm going to go ahead and make this like 50 gig. We want to change the host caching. We have some options here. Again, we're not going to do this for this domain controller. It's no need. We're going to go ahead and hit OK. Let it create. Notice it's attaching a new drive. Takes just a couple seconds, and now we have our 50 gig drive. Let's go ahead and look at our actual virtual machine and connect to that and then establish this drive. Of course we have to log in. Once we're in there we're going to go ahead and go into uh, our server manager in Windows Server 2012 R2. We're going to hit tools and we're going to look once we're in here, we're going to take a look at the disk management tab. And voila, there's our drive. Again, this is standard stuff when it comes to Windows Server. Uh, you just uh, happen to be doing it on a virtual machine in Azure. We're going to see our drive. It's going to be unallocated. Now we're going to go ahead and create that volume. You can choose whatever drive whatever you want. In my case, I'm just going to go ahead and use the default F drive. In the formatting, we can just go with the defaults here. Uh, volume label, I to, again, I like to use my own name. Makes it easy for me to tell what's what and what's going on. Then we're going to hit finish. Now we have our drive. We're going to notice it's formatting. It takes just a few seconds here, and we have a formatted drive ready to go. And that will get our drives created. Let's go ahead and start getting this machine joined to the domain and get this domain controller process started. We're going to go ahead and change from our work group to our, um, our local domain that is currently hosted on-premise only. Again, standard stuff you're used to here. Remember, we already have that site-to-site -site connection, so we've got that communications channel established. We use an admin account for the domain in order to join it. That's going to take a couple seconds here. And we're going to get our pop up saying we're joined to the domain. We're going to go ahead and hit OK there, take all the defaults. <coughs> and like always, when we join the domain, we're going to have to restart the machine. Let that restart go ahead and happen. Now we're back in and we've been restarted and we're joined to the domain. We're going to take a look at server manager here. And we're going to go ahead and hit manage and add our domain controller role. Again, standard stuff. If you promote a domain controller, nothing different here. Just verify that we're promoting the right machine. We want to check our Active Directory domain services. 
add all the features. Again, just taking the defaults for the wizard here. Things to keep in mind about, you know, when you're promoting domain controllers. Go ahead and restart the server if needed. And we're going to go ahead and install. Do the magic of time. Again, that takes a little bit, but we're going to go ahead and take a look. Now that we have our, our role installed, again, back in Server Manager, and we need to actually go ahead and promote this domain controller and finish this off. Again, we're adding a domain controller to an existing domain. If we were just going with a new one, we would create a new. Need to make sure we change the credentials. We're going to go ahead and hit change there. I'm going to put in a uh, domain admin username and password so we can make this happen. Again, just takes a couple seconds here for us to walk through this wizard. This should be something if you've promoted main controllers in the past that you're very familiar with. There's no differences as to this point. We're going to go ahead and put in a store password. Again, standard stuff here, walking through the wizard. We want it to replicate to all our uh, domain controllers. And here's where we get the change. So remember in Azure, the two default drives on this virtual machine are used for the OS and for Azure. So we really don't want to put this on our C or D drive. We want to go ahead and use that drive we created earlier, that F drive. So we just want to change our um, Active Directory database to that F drive. Again, this is considered best practice for domain controllers in Azure. I'm going to roll up screen here telling us what we're doing. Some verification stuff going on right now. Again, nothing different than if you've promoted a domain controller than you're used to seeing. We'll come back and we'll get some general warnings that are commonplace when it comes to domain controllers. And I'm going to go ahead and hit install. And our machine is going to need to be restarted. I'm going to go ahead and log back in. And notice we have all kinds of new stuff related to Active Directory and DNS. Take a look at Server Manager, our local server. You can see we have all kinds of new tools here. Again, just showing you that, you know, the domain controller was established. And, you know, our uh, directory sites and services showing you our existing domain controllers and the new one we've added. Thank you for your time and that concludes this video on how to create a domain controller in Azure hybrid back to your on-premise network.